A reminder, please turn off or silence your electronic devices. Thank you. Our meditation today, TV is very potent. People do not realize just how much they are influenced by it. Why do companies spend millions of dollars on advertisement? Simply because it works. Here's an example. We remember the kids who have their younger brother try the new cereal mom brought home. Their kid brother, who does not like anything, eats a cereal. The phrase, Mikey likes it, is now etched in our mind. So you try to tell me that ads don't work. There are so many religious channels on TV, so, so how come the world is still in the mire of sin? And it is getting worse by the day. The gospel preached all over the globe. The Bible is still one of the best sellers. TV evangelists are getting richer by the day, and yet Satan has a heyday. It is because we don't believe with a supernatural faith, but an earthly faith. Take TV evangelists, for example. They mostly preach prosperity. If people give them their money, God will bless them. If these evangelists would truly preach the gospel, they would be pauper poor and take the money that comes in and give it to the truly poor. What we need is true faith. Meet the risen Christ, as the apostles did, and believe and live that, that faith that God has given us. In a moment of silence, let us place ourselves into the presence of God. Please rise. We praise you, we bless you, we 
the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed. He asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on a third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia. Jesus. 
And it says, oh, it must be John the Baptist. He came back to life, reincarnation. It's King Saul, who was in his uh, last uh, day of his life, basically, uh, he was looking for the witch of Endor because he was fighting the Philistines again and he, nobody was going to talk to him. And the priest who had the Urim and the Thummim in front of him, they couldn't give him any answer. God didn't speak to him. So he was looking for a witch, a witch of Endor. And he came to her and says, Conjure me up, whom I tell you, Samuel. And so finally, there he came. He was a ghost. He doesn't have flesh and blood. Not of in, he, Christ wasn't a ghost. He had flesh and blood. He will show us because he was without sin. He showed us what will happen to us when the last day arrives. And Christ comes in the glory of the clouds of the angels of God. And then we will receive our bodies back. It is a good thing. But we must believe that. We must hang on to that. There is a life after. Let this judge who lived in Yugoslavia a few decades ago, a good man, and he likely did, once we did on a Saturday, you know, taking a shower, and it was a little dark because clouds came over and he turned the switch on and he electrocuted himself. And his wife heard the scream. She ran upstairs and sure enough, there he was. She called the friends and neighbors, the ambulance and to bed. He's dead. He's dead. So they brought him home to the morgue. And so everybody was like moaning and wailing. And close to midnight, this guy came back to life. He goes up front to where the receptionist was sitting. And this guy runs away. He thinks he saw a ghost. He called his wife. Hello, honey, it's me. She fainted. <laughs> Couldn't get any more. He called his friends. They thought it was a bad prank from kids. And he couldn't get anybody because the news went out that he had died. Everybody knew that he was dead. So he couldn't convince anybody that he was alive. Eventually, he called a friend outside of town who didn't hear the news, and he told him, tell my, tell my friends, my wife, that I'm alive. And so it was. It is, once we're dead, we, are, we, we don't know how to deal with them anymore. And uh, it's a sad thing because it is a sacred body which we have. God made it sacred. And he, all throughout our life, God dwelt within us. But we have to be able to live that life according to the love to that God. He taught us. God taught us. He came to us to show us how to get to heaven. But there's such a thing called TV, for example. That's not always a good thing. And the TV uh, twists things a little bit. Um, that you heard about the commercial, about the Mikey likes it. This is how things get to us. When you think about back in the, the 70s, there was this movie about uh, the, what is it called, The Exorcist? <laughs> Actually, some of those actors died a really bizarre, cruel death. It's, it's just, a, if you read up on the history, that thing's quite interesting. But actually, from then on, <laughs> Satanism was on the rise. The Mafia in the 70s, just about washed up, the FBI, the good FBI then, they did everything to destroy them, and they almost had them. And then came out the movie, The Godfather. <coughs> <laughs> and from that moment on, the Mafia had a resurgence. Because the Mafia, the people found out, oh, it's not a bad thing, you know, it's just our history. It's like everybody struggles, and so the Mafia is well and alive again today. See, what people do, they put something in your mind. And that's what happens in our good, good old days. People talk about immoral things as being moral. And so they keep it in your mind, and you start talking about it, you get used to talking about it, and you don't think twice about it, it's not so bad. And all of a sudden, you think like them. Satan's strategy, strategy works. It is just you have to bring it to the forefront all the time, and then all of a sudden it sinks in, and you're part of that immoral lifestyle. It's not a good thing. We have to be alert. We have to know what's going on. So why are we not doing more about Christ? We have all these things. Because there is very little truth about Christ and what he did. If we would be excited about what God had done, then we would be going out and telling everyone. Not talking about the last episode of a series or whatnot. We're talking about Christ and what the new life God gave us will do for us. It's exciting to have God in our life, but we must have Him, we must see Him. 
You must be with him. And like he said to Peter when he asked him, who do people say of this and this and that? And Paul, Peter said, you are the son of God. My father in heaven told you this. That's why when Christ came, they knew the scriptures, but he opened the scriptures for them. We need to, before we start reading the scriptures, we need to actually pray to ask the Holy Spirit to come to us and be with us and enlighten us and show us what's really going on within. You have so many theologians who know everything front to back about the scriptures, but they are wrong because they're not working with God and God opens the scriptures for them. And if God opens the scriptures for you, all of a sudden you start seeing things in a new light, the light of God. And that's what most people have lost. They have everything in this world which they need. There's no more need for God. And for those who are trying to bring God back into this world, they're being shushed and they're being killed. A lot of people are being killed in our country for truth. And so that's where we are. You're called into this world. You don't have a real good foundation. Close your eyes sometime and then start praying with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will come and says, take your finger and put it in his nail mark. Put your hand and put it in his side. So what the Holy Spirit will do, he'll give you an experience with what it would be like, or be like with Christ, so that we have an indelible knowledge about it now. And then we'll be given the message to go and tell all the people. It is, Christianity is not for widows. Christianity can be misconstrued. And we don't want to do that. We want to have the truth even in the, in the scriptures which we read. And so that's why we have to pray an awful lot. Pray hard. And we can do this with the Holy Spirit. And He will bring us to that resurrection. Resurrection is a good thing. We are meant for it. Not the ghost. A true resurrection. See, we are already dead to ourselves when you're baptized. You said you would die to self and you did. And now we start to live in this world and we forget that vow which we made to die and let Christ live within us. So we have to have a resurgence, a resurgence of love for God, a resurgence for the scriptures of prayer. And then things will happen in our community and in our country and things will turn for the better again. Let us please stand and confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of earth and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten by me, consubstantial of the Father, through him all things were made. For our sin and for our salvation, he began on the land, and by the Holy Spirit was the heart of the Virgin Mary, and the gay man. For our sake he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and was buried, and he rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess on my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the Lord to come. Amen. As people of faith, we seek the blood in the house of the Lord, and we will. Only God will send us his Holy Spirit. <clears throat> May the Holy Church of God be purified so as to bring the gospel to all nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord our For Bishop Hyde and the Diocese of Madison, may our evangel evangelization effort to help bring salvation to all God's people be crowned with success. We pray to the Lord. Lord our For our beloved country, May the unlawful usurpation of communists be revealed and come to an end. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that our good Lord will not delay and come with his angels to support the church militant. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
For the poor souls in purgatory, may the mercy of God come to their aid, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now lift up our own needs in silence. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you always support those who ask for your guidance and help. Send us your Holy Spirit, so as to make us witnesses to the world. We ask this for Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Therefore, Lord, we pray 
graciously accept this relation of our service, and of your whole family, order our days into peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased to God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread under his own and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to be his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. <laughs> Peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Oh.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, Lord, and grant that we pray that those we were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just be reminded of uh, Martin Buber. He was an existentialist. He lived from uh, 1870s to 1960s. He was born in Vienna from an Orthodox Jewish family and ended up in Jerusalem. He was a Zionist, so he moved to Jerusalem and died there in the 60s. But he was an existentialist and he uh, gave us the I Thou uh, existential theory. So it's a quite interesting, wonderful man. And he, when he was young, he had a grandfather. And the grandfather was lame. So one day they visited <coughs> Grandpa and he went over and says, Grandpa, my mom and dad said you had a great teacher. Yeah, it was a wonderful teacher. And he told his story. And the teacher, when he taught, he got up and he started to sway and swing and dance and whatnot. And, and he got into it and more into it. And he got up himself and started swaying and dancing. From that moment on, he wasn't lame anymore. See, if you get into what Christ taught, what Christ showed us, get into that, and then all the lameness and disabilities go away as we become free in Christ Jesus. The Lord be with you. Yes. Yes. Mighty God, Father, Son, and Spirit, that will and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Saint Michael, you are the angel of the finest of the devil. You are the perfection of the Holy Spirit. May God be the King of the prayer, and the God of Christ that we lost, by the power of God, cast into the hell of Satan, and all the evil spirits, who are out of the world, seeking the souls of the kingdom. Our Lady for success, pray for us, St. Joseph, pray for us, all the holy angels and saints, pray for us, may the divine assistance remain always with us, and may the souls of the faithful depart, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. If you take just for a second, uh, on both entrances there are these yellow cards. They are nomination cards, ballots for nomination for pastoral council. If you think somebody would make a good pastoral council member, uh, please write in their names and drop it in the collection box. That would be very, very helpful for us to be pastoral council keeps existing. Also, we have a picture directory. We are working on the coffee table book for our parish. And we have got the history in there, American history, the dioceses and whatnot, and the pictures of the priests who worked here. And there we also put a picture directory in it. So if you please want to have your picture in there, send us a picture which you have, a good pixel picture. Or you come in during the, during the week and have a picture taken. We have the equipment here. Just give me a little jingle. I'll be here and take a picture. We're going to be good. Okay? Thank you. <laughs>